At the time of publishing, we just passed another Earth Day, and the focus of this video will be all about subjects related to sustainable customizing as well as a custom variant of one of the biggest proponents of saving Mother Nature, Poison Ivy. We're starting out with a follow-up to a previous video featuring the Battery Eliminator. Check out the link in the top right if you haven't seen it yet, and then come back here when you're done. This follow-up is actually thanks to one of the members here in the comments on that last video. MS Ferrari 248F1. We were commenting about ways to further save money and reduce power usage, and the smart plug was brought up to me. I immediately went looking for this item and picked one up for a few dollars. What is it, you ask? Like the name implies, it is a plug with built-in Bluetooth capabilities that allows you to turn your mobile device into a remote control for anything plugged into the smart plug. The included directions are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over the few quick steps. Download the corresponding app and select Add Device or a similar option. Plug in the new socket, then hold the power button down to get it into pairing mode. Select your Wi-Fi, input your password, and turn on Bluetooth on your phone or device. It will take a couple of minutes to recognize and pair, but then you'll be all set to control the plug through the app. Adding the battery eliminator to it, you can plug in the power adapter to this device and turn on your favorite displays with the touch of a button on your app. This takes the battery replacement to the next level and turns the socket off when not in use to conserve on power. The next subject I want to look at is the four different methods I've discovered for making copies of parts. Casting. The first method I used was one that is probably the most well known and that's your classic two-part compound silicone rubber and resin mixing molds. You have two different parts to mix to make your rubber mold and then two other parts to mix to make your liquid resin. The rubber mold itself cures in about 8 hours and the resin cures in about 1 hour. I started out doing really well with this process and I was pretty happy with the results. However, due to a short shelf life, you never know how old the product you'll be buying is and that can lead to varying or sometimes unusable results. You also have a couple of other steps involving spray on mold release agents for both parts. The other downside to this method is the cost. This stuff is not cheap and if you get a good batch, you have to use most of it up in a week or two. So plan ahead on all the casting you'd like to do to get the most out of it. You've probably picked up that it wasn't my favorite method, but I did get some really good results out of it at the same time. That said, we'll be going in order of sustainability and value for these casting compounds and the next method is called Amazing Mold Putty. It too is a two-part rubber mold compound, but you don't have to mess with any mold release or worry as much about its shelf life, as far as I know. It captures details very well and is extremely simple to use though. It claims to cure in only 20 minutes, but I found it's best to let it sit for a few hours or so just to be sure. This next bit may be a shelf life question, but I think it was more of a quantity thing. I was making a mold of my custom TNBA clay face and ended up having to do it twice because I tried peeling the mold off after about an hour. It was too runny and it wasn't cured and I had to start the process over. Normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but it was for a rather large mold and seemed pretty wasteful. Once you have your mold, you can simply put your favorite sculpting compound in there and let it cure for the required amount of time. Voila! Double clay faces. Or clay face and magma, eventually. The third method is one called Oyumaru. Oyumaru? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it tops my list for ease and reusability. It's as easy as boiling water and letting it melt for a few minutes drying it off, pressing it onto your desired object to cast, then let it sit for 10 minutes until you can peel it off. Again, the mold release is built into the mix, and like the amazing mold putty, you can add your epoxy and let it air cure, peel the mold off, and you get a fresh copy. Some molds you want to use over and over, but the best feature about this stuff is that you can simply toss it back into the boiling water and make a whole new mold without any issues. This makes it much handier for those one-off castings you need and is wonderfully green since you can keep recycling it. I mentioned four methods of casting, but admittedly I haven't tried this last one yet because it's very new and wasn't going to arrive in time for making this video. However, it is advertised as what could be my new favorite method for casting. It takes the liquid pouring method from the first compound, but adds the reusability of the last one, and you don't even need a stove. All you have to do is put it in the microwave and you have an instant ready-made silicone liquid to work with. Once you're done, you cut it up and then store it until your next reheating in the microwave. It seems like a powerful new compound and a real game changer for its ease of use. I'm very curious to try it out and will report back once I can get my hands on some. 
I hope I've helped you realize how easy casting can be and how you can save money and plastic by making your next fodder parts instead of buying them. But wait, we're not done yet. What's a DC video about helping the earth without an appearance by Poison Ivy? This is the perfect custom to feature not only for the character selection, but also because I use casting to make parts for her. Much like my last video where we briefly looked at Justice Lord Wonder Woman, Miss Isley was made before I started filming my work, so I only have three simple pictures from her process. For the base figure, I used the BTAS Ivy and dremeled away some costume details on the hips and her gloves. Next, you'll notice that this Ivy has bare feet, and obviously the standard Pamela doesn't. Where was I going to get bare feet in this style and scale? Luckily, the Mad Love Harley Quinn DC Collectibles made has the perfect legs, but that two-pack is fairly pricey these days. So what's the cheaper alternative? You guessed it, cast her legs from the shins down. I used my now trusty Oyumaru to get the job done and simply made a two-piece mold on the sides of her legs. In the meantime, remove Ivy's boots with either a heat gun or a space heater. Cut the new epoxy legs down to size to maintain her height and then glue them in place. Be sure to add some compound at the seams to blend them together so you don't see the transition. Ivy has a very simple paint scheme with the bare legs, black swimsuit, and little shine of green running up the torso. Whether you apply the cell shading is of course your preference, but I find it to be a pretty essential part to this more simplistic Halloween variant. If you're wondering where I got this outstanding head, that's a little different. I was fortunate enough to win a giveaway from the incomparable Zilu1984 on Instagram. I knew it would be the perfect addition to really set this variant apart and could not have been happier when it came in the mail. To finish her off, I sculpted one of her jack-o'-lantern bombs onto her open left hand and then made the smoke a removable piece of epoxy. I also sculpted a little burning match for her right hand and that brought it all together. Here is the completed figure ready to face Batman in the pumpkin patch and almost get him. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed a brief look at how you can continue to improve your collection as well as improve your green game, even in the customizing field. Join me next time for another user requested look, this time at our first Justice League villain, the unique android Amazo. I'll also throw in a look at my custom Mercy Graves, as she had a decent sized supporting role in that episode and will be another photo based behind the scenes look. Go ahead and leave any questions or requests for future characters in the comments below and feel free to like and subscribe to get notified for my next video. Follow me on Instagram too as I post a lot of finished customs up there well before these making of videos ever get made. Have a good one, and happy customizing!